Good morning. We'll try that one more time. Good morning. You know, it's kind of like Cindy's chicken and dumplings. It's always better the second time. Hey. Welcome to Mountainside. We've got some people here who are visiting, and, and we want to welcome you. You're our honored guest today. Before we get going, we'll have just a few announcements. Today is our second Sunday challenge. I'll have a basket up here on the altar at the end of our service. Uh, please feel free to donate. All of those funds that we receive on our second Sunday go into our benevolence uh, fund for those people who really need help, and they come to the church, or we find out we hear of somebody that needs help. So please. Uh, for the Thanksgiving Missions Outreach, we've got one team that has signed up. We need a couple of more, please. Consider being a part of, of taking a Thanksgiving meal out to uh, somebody who really, really needs it, a family. Um, that without this church's generosity, without our blessing, they probably would not have a Thanksgiving meal. So please, uh, consider being a part of that. We, we need about, uh, Pam, how many more would you say? We need about five more teams. We need what? We need one more couple. Okay. Okay, we need one more couple. Okay, now, that, now let, me call this bus, let, let me call this business meeting to order. Okay, we got that handled. The Hanging of the Greens is going to be on November 26th uh, after, uh, after the service. Feel free to, to bring some stuff that you can change into, some clothes. But the more people that we have here, uh, the quicker it will go. And uh, it will go up so fast, and then you step back and take a look at it, and this, this sanctuary, this church is just transformed. And it just so it's, it's one of my favorite days of the year to see all of that change. The, the 3M, the, the um, Mountainside Methodist Men, will not meet this coming Tuesday. I have a, uh, a, an appointment that I have to go to. Um, those of you that use the VA for some of your medical needs know that they don't like changing their times to meet you, so uh, I've got to go. We'll pick it back up the next, the next, sun, uh, next Tuesday. And the voice of God will continue at 1 o'clock this coming Wednesday, led by Cindy Crumpler. And for those of you who have been it's, it's done? No? I'm getting a yes and a no. May, it's a definite maybe. One more. On the, thir on the 13th. One more, vis one more time. Well, if you're done, come anyway. You can just start singing and I'll come in and join in and break up the party. Um, the, the insert that you have in your bulletin is for the, uh, those people. Uh, if you want a Thanksgiving meal prepared by the men of this church, uh, please sign up. Get that form out. Make as many copies as you'd like. And, and then on Wednesday, uh, we'll be they'll stacked up out here and people will drive through, give us the names, and we will give them those, those bills. So uh, it is a wonderful time. The, uh, the community Thanksgiving meal is Wednesday, November the 23rd, and that is, that's the pickup, correct, that I just talked about? Yeah. That's the community Thanksgiving meal. No? Okay. <laughs> yes, that's the one I was just talking about. That the sign-up sheet, the insert, the community meal. You got two separate slides. I caught Terry off guard for once. Once. Mark your... Blessings on you, brother. The, uh, the Mountainside Christmas dinner, please, is going to uh, be on December the 7th, beginning at the start gathering around 5 o'clock. Make sure and get that, uh, that check into Carol, uh, Carol Schramm by the November the 26th and get your, get your spot reserved. We always have a great time there, and I tell you, the food is just absolutely phenomenal. So uh, please, 
uh, consider and sign up and get, get your check in so we have a good count. Any other announcements that I can make or that I can mess up this morning? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. First Thursday in, in December, the Bible Book Club, you be, uh, you're going, going through the book or beginning to go through the book of Zechariah. I know you've already been studying, Marilyn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. You'll have a great time. If there's no other announcements, before you even stand, I'll tell you what, let's all just stand up anyway. That way you can get a lot of uh, air in your lungs because we need, to, uh, we need to do something real, real quickly. It's Kathy's birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kathy. Happy birthday Happy birthday, Kathy. Now, let's join hands together. Let's, let's welcome each other and pass the peace of Christ. So good to see everybody this morning. We're going to go ahead and start singing and worship. As you return to your seats, feel free to just join in. Here we go. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord.
Well, I heard an old, old story How my Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atonement I repented of my sins and won the victory. Let me hear y'all say, Oh, victory, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due. Punch me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Well, I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. Then I cried, yeah, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. Somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. It's your turn. Oh, victory. about a mansion he is built for me in glory and i heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angel singing that old redemption story then some sweet day i'll sing up there a song of victory here we go oh, victory in jesus my savior forever he brought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood yes he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood oh there keep going It's like a Japanese sci-fi, wasn't it? Lips are moving, but you're not hearing anything. You, you see the names on the screen. Uh, we've, we've added a few this week. I'll, I'll remind you to please pray for those each and every day. Take your bulletins with you. Um, I, I do want to pray because I promised. Uh, I promised that we would add him and add her to our prayer list. Uh, a friend of mine that I met with every Wednesday night in a group of men that meets in Little Rock. Um, his na name is Dave Morano. 
got a call about 8 o'clock Friday night, and I knew that when somebody calls me that late, especially this gentleman that called, uh, it wouldn't, wasn't good. Um, Dave Morano uh, was killed Friday night in an automobile accident, a head-on collision. So um, they're just a wonderful, wonderful couple. They, they're members of my former uh, charge in Little Rock, and um, Mindy is just a, just a wonderful, kind soul. Pre, please pray for Mindy and for uh, her family as they go through this very, very, very tough time. Uh, are there any others that we need to add to this list? Yes. Dick Weber. Dick Weber. <laughs> Dick, for those of you at home, that's Dick Weber. He is being diagnosed with terminal cancer. Cancer is just uh, something else. Any others? Any others? Yes, Pam. My brother's been on there. Yes. Is having his big surgery tomorrow? Okay. And um, I'm, I'm looking down through here. I'm sorry? Ham. Yeah, Ham. His name, Ham Singleton. Uh, please, please, it's Pam's brother uh, having about an eight hour surgery tomorrow. Any others? Um, I don't know his name. I do what? Yes, I, and I don't know. Let's pray for him. I don't know his name. Um, I, I don't know all of the details of the accident, but the the young man who hit Dave head on uh, over by Sheridan, uh, they airlifted him to uh, to Arkansas Children's Hospital. Um, I don't know his name. God knows him. Um, we can we can pray for him this morning. Because he, if, he, if he makes it, um, praise God that he makes it. But he'll, he'll live with the scars uh, of that moment for the rest of his life. Uh, so we need to lift him up as well. Yes, and Kim is back with us today. Kim has been working herself to death. So, yeah, traveling back and forth to Las Vegas, and, and I, I think they're trying to, to put her on a 36-hour day. Uh, so, yes, let's, let's, let's so glad to have you back, Kim. Any others before we pray? Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come before you. And I know it's said so many times, Father, that we come and we humble ourselves before you. But just, just the thought of the creator of the universe and everything in it, everything from the tiniest of organisms to the biggest stars that shine the brightest in the night sky, that's you, Father. That's you. Everything that was created was created through your Son, Jesus Christ. In the beginning, He was with you. Let us never forget the immense blessing to be able to come before you. Be able to thank you for being who you are. Thank you for choosing us to be your children. Thank you for allowing us to be your children. Lord, you don't need us. Just bottom line, you don't need us. We have a thing, nothing that, that we can offer you that is even comes to the level of an offering that you need, that you, that you deserve. That's the grace that you give us. Father, you, you lay mercy on us and you do not give us what we deserve. That is your immense mercy. And Father, you give us things. You give us what we don't deserve. And that's your love, your caring, your presence, Oh, Father, your presence. 
be very real today in this service. Shower each and every one of us here and for those who are tuning in on Facebook, Father, I ask that you fill their homes with your Holy Spirit. Be strong, be strong today. Father, we live in a world that we think couldn't get any worse. But we know, Father, that in accordance with your word, it is going to get worse. Your church will be called home. And evil will be allowed to roam the earth. I do not want to be part of a, of a society where that happens. Father, we look forward to hearing the trumpet. We look forward to seeing your Son high in the sky. And for all of the, 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 the bride, the, the groom is called up, the church. So the brides, the bride of Christ. Let us not forget that. That we are a royal priesthood. We are your children. We have been adopted. And Jesus calls us brothers and sisters because we are joint heirs with him in all of the riches of heaven. We take so much for granted day to day, Father. Forgive us. Forgive us when we lose sight. Forgive us when we forget. But no matter how far we have strayed away from you, Father, we know that to return to you is only one step. One step, Father, because you're always with us. Father, please watch over all of these that are listed here. Those who were not mentioned, comfort them. I'm especially reminded of Mindy and her family. Comfort them in their grief. Ease their pain. Father, dispatch angels to wrap their wings around that family. Help them. Help them in the days to come. They need you. They need you strongly. Father, in all of these things, all of these prayer requests, all of the praises, Father, we lay them at your feet as you sit on your throne. We thank you for being with us today. There is no place that we would rather be than right here, right now. Together, Father, we join our hearts and our voices and our minds together. And for those even at home joining with us, Father, we say that perfect prayer. We say it all together with as full of hearts as we can, we can do. Father, we love you. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, the Holy Spirit has a way of reminding you of some people when you're praying, all of a sudden, you, you know it, the name pops into your head. Uh, I'm, I'm remiss. Uh, please uh, also keep Dixie Sorensen. Everybody here knows Dixie. I uh, got an uh, email from Jerry last night. Dixie's having some trouble breathing. And so he asked, this, he asked his church, his brothers and sisters in Christ, to pray for Dixie um, and for the doctors to, to figure out what's going on. So please... I uh, didn't mean to, to add that one to you, but yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Our ushers are going to be moving among you. I ask you, please, to record your, make sure that you have recorded your attendance today on the attendance pads. And when you do that, pass them to the outside aisle, and the ushers will be picking those up following the receipt of the tithes and the offerings. And I thank you. Let's go to God and thank Him for all that He does for us. Father, I thank you. I thank you so much for being who you are. Lord, 
we don't have to look too far to know that we are a blessed people. We are a blessed nation. And for those, Lord, who don't know You, that is our task. That is our task to tell You. Tell them about You. So they too can become full of Your grace. Lord, I thank You for the tithes and the offerings that we will be receiving today. Lord, I ask that You bless each gift. Multiply it so it reaches around the world. And I ask that You bless each giver. We just love You and we thank You. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Sometimes at night I am afraid I cover my eyes Cover my shame But here in the dark Broken of
Lord, there are things we go through. Some of the prayer requests this morning. It's beautiful. But Lord, there are times this song, <laughs> that second line in that chorus, oh great light of the world, feel of my soul. Because I'm half a man here. Lord, we ask, come make us whole. Forgive us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Gosh, what a such a wonderful praise song. First, I'd like to say happy Veterans Day to each and every one of you that have served and to the spouses because uh, if, if you're a military spouse, you know, you serve just as much. And in some cases, um, there's a reason. I will tell you uh, just very, very quickly, uh, in radio transmission, uh, if you hear the, the name, like uh, the nickname of a unit, followed by the number six, like Bowie Six or Roadrunner Six or whatever that is, you know you're talking to the, the commander of that unit. That is the reason I call Cindy Household Six. <laughs> oh, World Six, okay. But happy Thanksgiving, uh, happy Veterans Day, happy Veterans Day. How do you pack for a trip? How do you pack? Do you throw stuff in a bag the evening before or do you wait till the morning of and just throw stuff in the bag zip it up and run if you are then you're one of those kind of people that says oh there's a Walmart close by wherever we're going we need it we'll buy it there maybe you're the person who packs ahead of time two or three days or maybe you're the person that makes a list my oldest daughter, whenever I would travel, and I used to travel a lot, my oldest daughter would sit on the bed, and she'd have the list, and she would read it to me. And I would go, and I'd get whatever it was. If it wasn't on the list, it didn't get packed. But I make those lists. Then there's the kind of people that's way above me. Pat Shade and I were talking in the office on Thursday, and we were talking about some things. And I knew where he was going. He's not here today. I know where he would be. And I said, Pat, you better go home and start packing your hunting clothes to go to deer camp. He calmly looked at me and he said, they're already there. <laughs> I said, y you want upped me on that one. There's a lot of Christians that fall somewhere between throwing stuff in the bag on the morning of the trip and those like Pat that are way ahead of the ball game. Everything in between. Biblically, we need to be all packed up and ready to go at a moment's notice. Amen? If you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. A book written, and if you keep in mind, when you read anything in the book of Matthew, know that it is written to the Jews by a Jew to convince the people, the Jews, Jesus is who he says he is. He is the Messiah. We're going to be beginning in the 25th chapter, be reading verses 1 through 13. These words are the words of that come from our Savior Himself. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five of them were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. 
The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy, and they fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here comes the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The, ten vir- the virgins who were already there, who were ready, went with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week, we talked, just to remind you, of how staying silent in the face of evil is not only being submissive to it, it's allowing it to flourish. And scripturally, it's a sin to stay silent. God moved in that service with his, in accordance with his promises. And for those of you that were here, no, it was a powerful, powerful service. We also talked about the, how this world is in chaos. Yes, it's in chaos. Is it going to get worse, the question I ask? Is it going to get worse? Yes, it is going to get worse, especially after the church is raptured and evil is absolutely free to roam the earth and cause utter and complete chaos, for lack of a better term, for a while. Today, we find Jesus in the last week of his ministry. He has traveled from Mount Hermon north along the Jordan River south. He's camped on the, as as we read in John this past week, uh, Bethany on the other side of the river, a very special place. That's the place where the Israelites crossed into the promised land. That's a place where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, his cousin. And this is a place where he was camped. He heard of Lazarus. He waited a few days. He raised Lazarus from the dead at Bethany. But now we find him in Jerusalem. He's made his triumphant infant entry. And he is in his last week. While he's in Jerusalem during that week, he is challenged extensively by the Pharisees. To them, he, pay, he, he tells... The parable of the two sons. He tells the parable of the evil farmers and the parable of the wedding banquet. He's meeting challenge after challenge after challenge with truth. He is speaking against evil with truth. But finally, he stops teaching. And he says this to the religious elite. Woe to you. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter. Nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Woe. Jesus goes on to call them out in front of all of the people in Jerusalem that have gathered. Their blood pressure is doing this. At the end of the day, I know Jesus was tired. So he and his followers left the city gates and went out to the nearby Mount of Olives. Once they got out there, the apostles privately, Scripture says they privately went to Jesus and asked him, Lord, what did all of those parables mean? 
that you spoke of today. How did Jesus answer that question? How do you think? With more parables. One of these answers is today's scripture text. It is the parable of the ten bridesmaids, or as some of your translations say, the ten virgins, which is translated bridesmaids. So it's interchangeable. The contract, as you well know, the contract in the, the Jewish uh, marriage proposal, the contract has been paid. The dowry has been paid by the bridegroom to the father of the bride. He then goes back to his home, back to his father's house, and prepares a place for his bride. She waits. She waits. The bride does not know when he will return, so the bride keeps someone on constant watch. She's packed up. She's ready to go. But she doesn't know. The word is spread in our scripture that the bridegroom is coming. He's coming. So the bride and the bridesmaids jump up out of bed. They take their lamps and they go out and stand and wait on him. But as it turns out, not all are ready as five of the bridesmaids do not have enough oil in their lamps to last all night, nor the trip ahead to the place that has been prepared for the bride. In the explanation, even before Jesus begins to speak this parable, he speaks these words. He says, at that time, meaning some time in the future, at that time. The kingdom of heaven will be like. Then he starts teaching. We know Jesus, we know Jesus is referring to the church, the bride. But then he tells of ten bridesmaids, half of them ready to go out into the dark and half not quite ready. (laughs) Just, Just like my earlier example, Half had packed ahead of their trip and half thought that they could wait and pack at the last minute. They thought they could get more oil at midnight at the 24-hour Walmart out there somewhere close by. At the sound of the warning at midnight, all of them woke up They trimmed the burnt ends off of the wicks and they grabbed their pre-packed supply of oil, that is, half of them. Those bridesmaids who were not ready realized their error and they asked for more oil from those who had prepared that they had the oil in their jars. No, they replied, There may not be enough oil for us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. So they went to the sellers, but they missed out on greeting the bridegroom. The bride, the bridegroom, and the five bridesmaids left for the wedding feast. The doors were closed. And the five who lacked enough oil for the trip, they were left behind. When they finally got to the wedding feast, it was too late. It was too late. If we look closely at this parable, we have to first ask, what is the lesson that Jesus is trying to convey? What is he trying to teach us with this parable. Whenever you read a parable, that's what you need to ask yourself. What what is the lesson that we should learn from this? Is it always to have enough oil? Don't sleep too heavy or you'll miss the alarm. Thank God for snooze buttons. Or is it there's not always a Walmart around, figuratively speaking, 
to boil oil in the middle of the night. The explanation is simple. Simple. Once you hear it, it becomes clearer and clearer. The bridesmaids themselves represent the church, or might I say, individual churches. Remember, at the beginning of the parable, Jesus spoke, at that time, at that moment, the kingdom of heaven will be like. The bridegroom is coming. He is the coming of the kingdom of heaven or the coming of Jesus to rapture the church or churches up to the kingdom of heaven. Those that are ready. Those that are ready. By that, do I mean some won't be ready? That's exactly what I'm saying. And that's exactly what Jesus is conveying in this parable. But there's a few things that we need to look at before we finish today. Just remember, not everyone, not every church is going to be raptured. Remember the parable of the thief that comes in the middle of the night? Jesus said to be ready, even during the midnight, because you don't know when the thief is going to be coming to steal your things. Today's parable has that same warning, to be ready at all hours of the day and night. The other thing we need to understand is the purchasing of the oil. Now, why did Matthew write that? The markets that sold the oil for the lamps were only open during the daytime. Jesus knew this. But in this parable, he conveys how impossible, how impossible it will be to do the things that we, we as a church, know we should be doing. And we're not doing them. The five bridesmaids scramble and found some oil somewhere. They didn't buy it at the market because the markets were closed. They had to beg, borrow, or steal that oil. But by the time they accomplished what they should have done a long time ago, the doors to the great wedding feast were already shut and they were denied entry. Jesus will be, Jesus will come. That is one of the great assurances that we have. Angels stood on the Mount of Olives and say, He will come again in like manner. Jesus is coming. Some will be ready. For others, His coming will be the most inopportune time to them. Because they are not ready. They will be left behind. That may seem strange to have Jesus tell this parable to his disciples and all of the followers and to the apostles. Why is he talking about at that time? I truly believe Jesus spoke this parable not for the apostles, but he spoke this parable and it was recorded for the church today, for you and me today. That's the only explanation that I can come up with. But let's briefly talk about some things. What as a church are we supposed to be doing? What are we supposed to be doing? Are we supposed to be coming to worship on Sundays? And then the rest of the week hopping on our Christian raft and just floating down the river enjoying the scenes until next Sunday we put the raft into the shore? We go to church one more time? No. Jesus says, be ready, be ready. This is a daily be ready command. We don't know when Jesus will be coming back for his church. But if we wait to do all of the things that we know we're supposed to be doing, we will get left behind. 
trying to scramble at the last moment. So what should we be doing? First, (laughs) we should be prayed up. I say it over and over and over again. This church is a praying church, but can we pray more? Yes, we can pray more. Begin every day as if it's your last. I'll say that again. Begin every day as if it is your last. Have the joy in your heart. This is my last day on this round thing. Tomorrow I'm going to be in heaven. Have that level of joy in your heart. But now when you wake up the next morning, don't be disappointed. Go, oh, doggone it. Say a prayer and thank God for giving you another day. Pray, pray, don't lose heart. Secondly, secondly, and I mean this wholeheartedly, take care of each other. Take care of each other. Pray for each other. If somebody needs your help, help them. Leave each other's presence as if it's the last time you will see them on this side of heaven. What does that look like? It looks glorious, brothers and sisters, if that's the case. We don't know how much time we have individually. Did Dave know that he was not going to make it home to Mindy when he left her that that afternoon or that morning? No. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. But I'll tell you one thing, I heard it spoken, I don't remember the lady's name, but she was speaking. She lost grandsons in the Oklahoma City bombing. And the question is, and I know the question has to be going through the Murano family, why? Why did, why did Jesus take Dave? Why did Jesus take so and so? My mother, my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, why did He take them? He didn't. He didn't. But I tell you one thing, he was there to receive them. And he was there to receive Dave and said, Well done, good and faithful servant. Lastly, and this is the best, the best imagery I could come up with. We've got a huge spiritual bus that we're going to be taking to heaven. There are so many more seats on it then we have people in this church. Our task is to not leave this earth with a seat, with an empty seat on that bus. Be ready to witness to people daily. Telling them about the love of Jesus. His grace giving us what we don't deserve and His mercy not giving us what we do deserve because we are sinners. But He died for those sins. Speak the truth in this world. Speak against evil. When you do speak that truth, speak it in love. And don't let people be swayed by falsehoods. And don't let yourself be swayed by falsehoods. And the lies, literally lies that are being spewed on radio stations and on TV. Don't do it. Don't allow it to happen to anybody or even to yourselves. We are called to be witnesses for Christ. Not just seat holders, but witnesses for Christ. Know. Know what you're supposed to be doing. You are part of a royal priesthood. And as a priest, you're supposed to be offering sacrifices. Make yourself a living sacrifice to God every day. Be ready. Be ready as you go about your day. It could happen when you're getting coffee at Artfully Baked and Brewed. Can't take the coffee with you, by the way. Be ready as you lay your head down on the pillow at night. If you wake up the next day, begin that day with a prayer. Begin it with a prayer. There's no better way to start a day than with a prayer. Ask people, ask ask Christ to 
to put people in your path that day that you can witness to. Because He will put people in your path that need to hear the good news. And don't be afraid, as Jesus told the apostles, don't be afraid what to say, because the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. Do what you need to do every single day. Don't be the one who Jesus asks, as He did Peter, James, and John in the Garden of Gethsemane. Couldn't you stay awake and keep watch for just one hour? As the title of this message says, don't get caught spiritually sleeping. Keep watch. Keep watch. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Father God, we thank you. We thank you so much. We know that is one of your promises, that we know that your son is coming back. The angels know that your son is coming back. An angel told the apostles, your son is coming back. And yet, people want to deny you. People want to deny even your son. Oh, Father, how sad it will be for those people when your son does come and the church is raptured and this world will immediately, immediately be in chaos even before evil starts to roam. The realization on those people left behind is going to be, oh my goodness, oh my, that was true. Father, may we be ready. May we be bold, witness for you. May we take care of everything that we're supposed to be doing so you will find us worthy, worthy to be a part of the great wedding feast. Please, Father, do not allow us to be kept on the outside. Spur us on to do what we need to do daily, individually, and as a church. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Would you please stand? We have so many people that have asked for prayers by this, from people of this church, praying for them. There are miracles that have happened when this church has prayed. You know it, and I do too. So I just want to thank you for those prayers, but I also ask you to continue to pray for all of those who have requested it especially. God knows them. God is waiting on us, His children, to bring their name before Him. Take that bulletin with you. I ask you to pray. There's so many people hurting in this world. They need a touch. Be a conduit of Christ's love to someone who needs it. They do. So be ready and be available. If you've been coming here for quite some time and you have reached a point where you say, you know, that's a place where I want to count. I want to be a professing member of that church. This church is on the move. We're taking baby steps, but it's going in that direction. And you see it, and you know it. You know it. And in the months to come, we'll be welcoming a lot of people here. So be prepared. Be prepared. Let your light shine. But if you come to that place, you come forward, and we will welcome you. Whatever it is, whatever it is, don't listen to me. Listen to the Holy Spirit that is speaking to each and every one of you right now as we sing briefly. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted you were condemned and I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again 
Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Can we sing that that chorus one more time without any instruments, please? Give us give us a key. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Please bow your head and receive this blessing. Father, we do. We honor you. We thank you for being here in our midst today. Lord, we know you are here because your word promises we're two or more gathered. You will be there also. Thank you, Father. I ask that you go with us now. Watch over each and every person. Father, may the Holy Spirit be strong inside of them. May we talk to you constantly as we go about our day. May we be ready to speak a kind word to someone who needs it. We don't know their, thir- their circumstances, but let's speak the truth in kindness and in love and let your light shine through us that they have to ask, what is it? What is it that makes you so joy-filled? May we then tell them about you and about where we're going to spend eternity, praising and honoring you before the throne of God himself. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's not forget the second Sunday basket up here, please. Amen.